Well, good morning, everybody. Beautiful morning we have today. Nice, bright sunshine. Um, it'll be a little bit buggy, but that's okay. Welcome back. Thanks to all the new subscribers. We appreciate y'all joining in on us, in with us. And what I want to do today is just to give a quick overview of kind of general maintenance that I do on the sawmill and kind of how often I do it. Um, there's not a whole lot to them. It's pretty simple to maintain. And I figured I'd show you how to, how I change the blade real, real fast. And it doesn't take much to get the blades changed on them either. Um, so let's get started. So start off with the, with the roller guides. Um, I think cooks recommends every four hours, which is about what I do. I, I just give them takes three or four pumps with a grease gun and it starts oozing the grease out just a little bit. Just when it starts pushing the, the grease out is when I stop. I try to do it at the end of my, when I'm done running it. Um, I ran this thing last night. You'll probably see a video of that, but uh, I greased it right before I started just because it had been a, I don't know, a couple weeks since I'd ran it. Shot a few pumps of grease into them. I didn't grease it when I got done because I only ran the sawmill for about 25 minutes. I mean, it, don't have to put that much grease in them but there's really nothing to do on this this wheel it, inside of here is a sealed bearing so there's there's nothing to do in there that has a tapered roller bearing on the drive side has a grease fitting on there and i was greasing it every three or four times that i ran it and we'll come to find out it's it's too much they said every about every 500 hours and so i i haven't greased that for a while now so um but i try to keep the majority of the stuff cleaned out of the guards it doesn't build up that bad it's it depends on how much crap is coming off your logs but it's filthy it probably needs a pressure washing but these these chains I just use uh, automatic transmission fluid. Just buy a cheap automatic transmission fluid. It doesn't matter what type it is. And spray on them chains. Uh, now it does attract the dust when you put that on there, but uh, it keeps them lubricated. And I don't know, I probably do that probably every 15 hours of runtime. If I know I'm gonna leave the thing setting for a while and it's gonna be tarped up and uh, I'll try to lube it up before I tarp it. Just, just get that keep rust preventative is all it really is. Um, so you got these grease fittings. They grease every time you run it. These rods here, the guide rods that the thing, the head rides up and down on. Uh, there's grease fittings on the back side, on both sides. I grease them every time as well. I go ahead and hit them with grease every time. Um, I don't know, a few pumps, you'll see it start pushing up here or pushing out the bottom. Once it's pushing out, you can't get no more in it. So that's when I stop it. It usually takes, those take about six, seven pumps of, per side, per fitting. So, and there's pedal block bearings on all these shafts for the chains, whether it be the, I guess it's all for the lift, but all these pedal block bearings, you really don't need to grease them that often. I mean, there's not a lot of movement in a, in four hours of time. That bearing's not really turning that many times, but I don't know. I, I grease it probably every four or five times. I, I use it just a pump or two in each one just to keep the dirt flushed out of it and whatnot. As far as changing the blade, it's pretty simple. I, I typically loosen the loosen that movable roller guide you got your handle here for slides in your adjuster just back it off pretty simple you really don't even have to take the other side off you don't have to open that other guard um, sometimes it's easier when you put the blade back on, open that other guard, then you can get it back on pretty, pretty easy. 
Um, so this blade is still in good shape. I'm not gonna put a new one on it right now. I just wanted to show you. So you would start out with a blade that's rolled up, get your new blade. Remember to wear gloves when you're fooling with these things. They are razor sharp and you'll regret it if you don't. You can just slide that back in there. Make sure you get underneath of your roller guides. These these grease fittings and the, the shaft seems to stick out and a lot of times it'll be laying on top of it and it'll, it'll mess you up. I just take the... I'll get a close up here and show you what I what I do, but when you slide the blade on, put the back of the blade even with the back of that wheel. Same on both sides. Back of the blade, back of the wheel. And then tension it back up. It's that simple. I'll go ahead and bring the camera around here so you can see what I do when I tension it to know how how far, excuse me, how far to go. All right, so hopefully you y'all can see this. There's a there's a spring inside of here. How Cooks designs it. There's a spring in here. There's a a rod. As you tighten it up, that rod comes out with the band wheel, and it starts putting. I'm getting pretty good tension on that spring. I can feel it. But you just run this out to where this block is even with, with this. And that's it. Um, then I'll take and I'll manually spin that blade around a couple times. Just make sure it's tracking right. And that's pretty much it. I'll show you what I'm looking for when, when you're, after you spin it, make sure it's tracking right. And then I'll fire it up and I'll slowly engage. This is your, this is to engage your blade here. Um, all it does is uh, tighten the belt, belt tensioner, just like your lawnmower would have. I'll just, when I fire it up after changing the blade, I'll just slowly engage it, let that belt slip a little bit until that thing gets rolling, just to make sure that you don't hit it with full full power right away and especially with a brand new blade on there i mean it could break or whatever i'll, I'll show you the other side here real quick so when i spin it around you're looking for that gullet which is the deep part of the blade just spin it around make sure it's running good on both sides back in there you just put an eyeball on it and when you fire this thing up it's kind of flush right there now just about flush when you fire it up and go to full speed that blade will walk walk out a little bit and that's what you want you want it to be about a sixteenth of an inch probably uh, between the gullet and the face of this wheel so it does change when you run the engine rpms up uh, that's one thing if you're if you're adjusting the tracking on these things the wheel tracking to get that blade tracking right you always got to run it to full rpm check it adjust run it to full four rpm you you don't do it just by spinning it by hand it's got to be at four rpm because it, it does change so that's pretty pretty simple blade change it takes Maybe three minutes. It's it's not difficult. Uh, so you really don't have a lot of grease points. There's two pedal block bearings in there. There's two on that shaft up there. And then there's two on that shaft up there. So you got two, four, six. And then there's a grease fitting in here for that rod that I talked about, mentioned earlier, on each side. So there's eight grease fittings. And then the, the drive is nine. And there's one grease fitting in here just for these threads. 
for the adjuster. So you got 10 grease fittings on this thing and that's it. It, it really doesn't take long to grease it, maintain it, whatever. Um, I guess there's the two roller guides too. So there's 12, 12 grease fittings total. It's not a, not a lot. Doesn't take much to maintain it. Blade change is easy. Your, your diesel fuel tank, I guess I never really explained that much. This tube here is part of the frame and they, they utilize it also for the diesel fuel tank for your blade lubricant. So you've got your fill cap right there and it's, it's a pretty small tank, it's maybe a couple gallon. I don't know for sure how many gallon it takes, but it sure don't use much. I mean, I, I bet you I haven't used seven gallon of diesel fuel in this thing the whole time I've had it. So it's, it's not much diesel fuel, even at the ridiculous prices that we're paying now, thanks to our current administration. But really there's not much to it. You got that chain there that runs the length of it. If it's, if you have a power feed, you've got a chain there that runs the entire length of the mill, however long your mill is. Um, there's no grease fittings on the, on the wheels that it's riding on. It's riding on these, uh, wheels inside of there that are, have a V in them that's set on top of this little piece of angle iron, but they're a seal bearing. No, no grease fittings in there, but just a quick overview of maintenance of it. It's pretty simple. Doesn't take much. Anybody's looking at these mills, you won't have any regrets. They, they really are a good mill. I think this thing is going to last me a long time, providing I don't upsize to a hydraulic mill. Don't tell my wife. So, um, anyhow, hope you guys enjoy these. This is a pretty short, quick one, but take care. Make sure to like and subscribe. Ask all the questions you want. I'll be glad to answer what I can. Thanks.